Hi everybody, it's that time of the month where I do one of my favorite videos that I do every single month and I talk about the books that are coming out, coming out this month, March 2020. I have so many amazing titles to tell you about, we better get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you guys are doing very, very well. I hope that your reading is going fantastically. I'm hoping that every book you're reading is a five-star read. Um, I know that's not logically going to happen, but we can all wish and dream, can't we? Today we're going to be talking about the books coming out in March 2020. I have so many great titles to share with you. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. Get out however you take care of your TBR, because I'm about to make it explode. If you are so able, order these books from your local independent bookstore and or have your library get you a copy if that is how you do your reading. Now, I am going to be honest with you, I'm going to have to talk fast because there are a lot of amazing books here. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Normally, I try to put them in order, but I really just organize them by when they came in on my shelves. So um, all of them are going to be a little bit mixed up, but I'll try to tell you um, basically the date that they come out. Um, I'm, not, I'm just mixing it up a little bit. Mixing it up, I can do that, right? It's just been a while. So there you go. The first book I'm going to tell you about is actually a book I think they moved up the, the publication date. It was originally supposed to come out in May, and I think it's coming out on uh, the end of March, the last week of March, and that is The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villavincencio, and this is out from One World. Now, this is a sort of a metafiction because we are going to, it does two things here. It talks about Carla's own um, life and story being an undocumented American from Ecuador. She comes here when she's five years old, um, and she is one of the first re, uh, undocumented Americans accepted to Harvard, and now she is currently a PhD student at Yale University, I believe in American Studies, if I'm not mistaken. And so this book waves in her own story, but what she has also done is she has interviewed many, many undocumented Americans, and she weaves their stories into one character or two characters to tell us about different things and different aspects of the undocumented American experience here in America. There's a chapter on all of the work that they did um, on and after 9-11. There's a, a chapter on health care and how they receive and sort of don't receive health care here in the United States. Um, and it is just absolutely, absolutely heart-wrenching, inspirational. Um, it's just fantastic. And she is just, she writes this book in sort of a narrative nonfiction style, almost a journalistic style. So she allows you to keep slight distance, but also at the same time, really give you so much to think about and uh, be uh, really thankful to the undocumented Americans that have done so much to build the country that we live in. So I absolutely loving it. I'm actually about halfway through. So there you go. The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villavincencio. And this is out at the end of the month from One World. Okay. The next book I'm going to tell you about is out already. And that is Dinkin' King Kong by James McBride. And this is out from Riverhead Books. Thank you, Riverhead, for sending me this beautiful finished copy. I am in love with this cover. Now, James McBride wrote um, The Good Lord Bird that was very popular a few years ago. I think it won the National Book Award and the Tournament of Books. Um, and he also wrote the memoir, The Color of Water, which I absolutely loved years ago. It's probably been 12 years ago or something like that. I don't know exactly when that came out, but it's been a while. Um, the Deacon King Kong focuses actually on a deacon who uh, one day, and I think like 1969, September, um, walks into part of the community with a gun, shoots and kills the local drug dealer. And this book is um, sort of a dive into not only why, what led up to this deacon doing this, but also the repercussions of that actions on all of the people who witnessed it, from the Black community to the Latinx community, all the different people in the community that witnessed this shooting occur, and how that event then shapes them moving forward. Um, yeah, I think it sounds pretty darn brilliant. Um, so that's Deacon King Kong by James McBride. This is out now. 
now from Riverhead Books. It came out the first week of March. So I'm trying to figure out. We're doing some rearranging in our house and reorganization. So um, everything in this room is in complete disarray. So you don't get to see it, but it sort of uh, makes it hard for me to figure out what I'm going to do here. The next book I'm going to tell you about is actually a collection of post uh, poems, and that is Post-Colonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz. This comes out on March 3rd. So it is out actually already from Grey Wolf Press. And it says here that this is an anthem of desire against erasure. Um, demands that everybody everybody carried in its pages, bodies of language, land, rivers, suffering brothers, enemies, and lovers, be touched and held as beloveds. I read, I think, three poems out of it, and I really like it. Poetry is one of those things that I dive into here and dive into here. I don't sit down and read an entire collection, um, but I think that it, this has a very prevalent, present sense to it to me. I feel like it's very timely, um, and also very beautiful in a lot of ways. So that is Post-Colonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz out now from Grey Wolf Press. Okay, let's go and do a little science fiction. This is Docile by K.M. Sparza. This is out from Tor. You can get your hands on it. I will tell you the official hardback copy of this book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I need to go pick up my copy of it myself. So Docile is a futuristic idea on the take on capitalism. Um, I love that it says there is no consent under capitalism. That's sort of the blurb on the back. I've heard that this is a very tawdry book at times. So if you are not one that can actually read um, sexual content um, without blushing, this may not be the book for you, but I challenge you to give it a go. It says to be docile is to be kept body and soul for the uses of the owner of your contract. To be a docile is to forget, to disappear, to hide inside your body from the horrors of your service. To be a docile is to sell yourself to pay your parents' debts and buy your children's futures. Docile is a science fiction parable about love and sex, wealth and debt, abuse and power, a challenging tour de force that it turns seduces and startles. Um, I started this book and it... Um, was it's going to be one of those books that I think is going to challenge me. So I need to grab my pencil and be ready to sort of underline and think. Um, I thought the first part of it was utterly brilliant. So that is Docile. There is no consent under capitalism by K.M. Sparza. This is out now from Tor Books. I believe this is also out now. I think it came out the first week of the month. It just says March <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is the graphic novel Glass Town, The Imaginary World of the Brontes by Isabel Greenberg. Now, Isabel Greenberg wrote two graphic novels, um, The Encyclopedia of Early Earth and 100 Nights of Hero. I want to say that that's the second one, which I absolutely loved. And this one is is just as good. So this is her take on an imaginary world that the Bronte sisters and their brother wrote together when they were younger. And you sort of get to dive not only into their real lives, but also into the imaginary world. And she creates this world and the characters sort of come off the page. I know that this is going to be in color. This is just a proof. So it is uh, black and white, but I loved this. It made me appreciate the Brontes in a way that um, I, I've always said that Weathering Heights is my favorite Bronte novel. Um, I appreciate Jen Eyre. I just think it's a little too long. Um, I've never read any um, Anne Bronte. I really probably should fix that. Um, but I loved this book. I thought it was absolutely great. It's definitely entertaining. It's for those literary sort of nerdy people too. So you get a different perspective on authors. Loved it. Glass Town, The Imaginary World of the Brontes, out now from uh, Abrams Comic Arts and highly recommend it. These are the ones that put out the parable of a sower. Um graphic novel that I did on my channel not that long ago. A book that I've already reviewed a number of times, but remember, I originally thought it was coming out in January, but they pushed the due date. So it's actually coming out at the end of March is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is coming out from um, William Morrow publishing press. I think this book is brilliant, but this book is not for everybody. This is a book about a young woman who is now in her 20s, but when she was in her 15 when she was 15 years old, she had a sexual relationship with her teacher. And now that she's in her 20s, she's been accused by other girls and they are reaching out to her to sort of create a case against him. But she truly believes in her heart of hearts that her relationship with him is different than what these girls are saying, and this is really about being in the mind of the of this young girl who we all 
understand and realize was a victim of a sexual predator who doesn't see the world that way. There are times where you will be frustrated with her. There will be times where you are um, sympathetic. You'll be so sad for the decisions that she's making. Um, there are times where you will hate um, her for what she does to others. Um, but in the end, this book is a lot about how difficult this whole sort of dynamic can be. Um, this book will not be for everyone. It is dark, dark, dark. Um, but I think it is beautifully written. I think it is completely timely. And I also feel as if she makes art out of this very dark topic in such a way that you will leave thinking and you'll leave, feel enlightened, but also ready to sort of have deeper, conversations regarding stuff like that. I hope that sells it because I really loved this book. And that's My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. And it is out, um, I want to say March 24th is the last Tuesday in the month. So there you go. Okay, a little tiny novella that is coming out is The Empress of Salt and Fortune. And I'm going to hold this up there because I do not know how to say this first name. I apologize, Ms. Vo. Um, and you know what? I should probably check real quick. Okay, she, yes. So, Miss was right. I just wanted to make sure I didn't mispronoun uh, her. Um, this is a novella. Um, we have two characters, main characters. We have an empress who has been married off, sort of after her country has been destroyed. The last thing she can do is marry um, in order to sort of bring some sort of economic stability to her world. And then we have a young woman that's sold into slavery who befriends the, um, the empress and their relationship and how it becomes more than she... Uh, uh, was expecting. Lauren, let's just take a look at that cover. That cover is freaking gorgeous. The back of this says, at once feminist high fantasy and an indictment on monarchy. This evocative debut follows the rise of the empress who has few resources and fewer friends. She's a northern daughter in a mage made summer exile, but she will bend history to her will and bring down the enemies piece by piece. Piece. So it's a slim little book. It is blurbed, though, by R.F. Quang, uh, Shannon McGuire, and Kate Elliott. So that's some pretty big names out there. Um, I'm super excited about it. It's actually one of my most anticipated novellas of the year. This video is going to take forever because there's so many more books. Um, this is Lost Autumn by Mary Rose Mac Cole. I'm going to hold that up there. This is coming out from Putnam, and I want to say that this came out. So it's out and available on May, March 3rd. So you've got it. We are in Australia, 1920. 17-year-old Maddie Bright embarks on the voyage of a lifetime when she's chosen to serve on the cross-continent tour of His Royal Highnesses, the dashing Edward, Prince of Wales. Life on the royal train is luxurious beyond her dreams and glamorous, good-hearted friends she makes crack open our world. But glamour often hides all manners of sin. Decades later, Later, she lives in Brisbane, uh, willing away the days. When a London journalist struggling with her own romantic entanglements begins asking questions about the reclusive author, M.A. Bright, Maddie is taken back to the dazzling days of the royal tour and to the secrets she has been keeping for so long. And that is Lost Item Autumn by Mary Rose McCall. And this is out now from Putnam Books. Okay. This is actually a book, I have to apologize to the author, because when I talked about it in one of my previous videos, <coughs> I don't know why, I know she's Vietnamese, and I said she was Thai, and that was completely wrong. So this is The Mountain Sings by Nguyen Phan Quê May, and this is out on April, uh, March 17th from Algonquin Books. So I apologize, I apologize, Nguyen. Um, I did not mean to, <laughs> to do that. Um, but this book is, I've actually already started it. It is so good. So this is a family saga told um, during, uh, just before and after the Vietnam War in Vietnam, we follow a family going through that whole experience. The beginning of the book is um, when Americans are bombing um, the city that the young girl and her grandmother live in. They are forced to flee sort of to the country in order to get away from the bombing. Ho Chi Minh City. I was, uh, sometimes my brain is just not where I need it to be. Um, and yeah, no, it is so good. Um, and that's The Mountain Sing by Nguyen Phan K. May. Quay May. I'm going to hold her name up there so you guys can see it. Um, follow her on Instagram. She is just a 
she's just great. She's great. Trust me, you'll like her a lot. Um, and I'm really excited about this book from Algonquin. It comes out on March 17th, 2020. A book that I've already read and I cannot stop thinking about is Hex by Rebecca Dienerstein Knight. This is coming out from Viking on March 11th, one, that cover. This is the story of a girl who works in a lab at Columbia University when one of her lab mates is killed because they work with poisonous plants. Something happens, she winds up dying. So the whole lab is sort of laid off. In a journalistic format, we follow this young girl who is utterly obsessed with her teacher. And it is about the relationships she's willing to sacrifice and what she is willing to do for this teacher. And the teacher is in her own way, this sort of not good, per there are not a lot of good people in this book, but it deals with obsession. It deals with sort of what we're willing to do to get back at people, all told from the point of view of one woman who is so obsessed that you know she cannot be a reliable narrator. It reminded me a lot in tone of uh, People in Trees by Hanagana Gahara. Um, just, it was just like slightly off kilter as a um, campus novel. It was creepy, but also like driving. Um, the main character is so dark at times, but at the same time, you want to help her. It is just one of those books that when I finished it, I have not stopped thinking about it. And that is Hex by Rebecca Dinnerstein, Night Out from Viking on April 11th, 2020. I highly, highly recommend that one. You guys do it as a book club because you will have a ton of stuff to talk about. I promise. Okay, a book that probably, well, an author that needs no introduction is Lily King. Um, her book, Euphoria, was a super rocket success, but this is her new novel, Writers and Lovers, and this came out on March 3rd, so you can get yourself a copy of it. Um, how do you explain this book? So this book is about a young author whose mother dies suddenly, and she's not ready for it, and she's also had a love affair go horribly wrong, and she arrives in Massachusetts, I think in the end of the 1990s, um, and she really doesn't know what she's going to do. It's like wedding invitations and debt collector notices. And it says, a former um, golf prodigy, she now waits tables in Harvard Square and rents a tiny moldy room at the edge of a garage when she works on a novel she's been writing for six years. At 31, she is still clutching onto something nearly all her old friends have let go, the determination to live a creative life. When she falls for very two different, very two different, very men, um, at the same time, her world fractures even more. She fights to fulfill her creative ambition and balance the conflicting demands of art and life in challenged ways that push her to the brink. I'm really excited about this one. Um, it's one of my ones that is like at the top of my TBR. So that is Writers and Lovers by Lily King out March 3rd from uh, Grove. Get your hands on it right now. Another book that um, I was going, I started to read it in uh, the paperback um, preform, and then FSG sent me a final version, and it is two beautiful four words, and that is Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kwai Strong Washburn, out from MS. MCD at FSG um, in their imprint. All I'm going to tell you about this book is because I want to leave it a little bit more mysterious than I normally is. I have not read a lot of books from the point of view of Native Hawaiians. And this is a book about people who grew up and their family is part of Hawaii and part of the Hawaiian culture. It's about going away from the island to search for other things. It's about the folklore of Hawaii and sort of all of that kind of stuff that goes on in creating their culture. And it's also about how the economy and consumerism and capitalism affect the people of an island state, um, it could be even an island country, like Hawaii, um, and uh, what it does to a family. Um, there's a lot to unpack in this book, but that's Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kwai Strong Washburn. And this one is out now, I believe. I apologize. I took out the piece of paper. I believe you can get your hands on this one now um, from MCD at FSG. Okay. Next is a book that is not in my normal, oh, this book is misfiled, so I'm not going to talk about it <laughs> because this video is way too long as it is. This book I actually think is going to be really interesting, and this comes out in March also. I don't have an exact, March 17th, and that's Pride of Eden by Taylor Brown, out from St. Martin's Press. 
This is the story of a Vietnam vet who runs a animal sanctuary in Georgia, um, and he rescues wild animals. And one day an, uh, a lion escapes and is killed. And he becomes obsessed with replacing her at whatever whatever methods necessary. So as you can imagine, that means that there's going to be a lot of stuff going on, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, regarding the legality of finding a lion and bringing in a lion back to Georgia. And this man's obsession, an utter obsession with replacing this lion. It says here that from an ancient crocodile scarred by forced combat with other animals, a panther caged in a yard, a rare tiger destined to be harvested for its glands, a lion kept as a tourist attraction at a gas station, to a pack of wolves being raised on a remote private island off the coast. The main character and his team battle an underworld of smugglers, gamblers, breeders, trophy hunters, and others who would exploit wild game. I'm here for it. I do not like people who exploit any type of animal, and I'm rooting for anyone who is doing something to change that. So that is Pride of Eden by Taylor Brown, eight from, out from St. Martin's Press on uh, in March 2017. It is March 17th. You can get your hands on it. And I really think the cover is quite beautiful. Okay, last two books. One that I've started and um, I'm loving, and that's Conjure Women by Afia Atakora. And this is out from uh, Random House out on March 17th. This is the story, um, two time periods. We have time, uh, part of it takes place during the times of slavery in 1854, I think, and after uh, the Civil War in 1867. The book calls it Slave Time and Freedom Time. We have a young woman in the slave time. Her name is Rue. Her mother is sort of like the go-to um, person for not only uh, homeopathic, that's the only word that pops into my mind, I know that's not right, but people go to her for sort of those type of cures that you're not going to get from the general doctor, but they also go for her for curses, to curse other people. Um, and stuff happens and some tragedy ensues and her mother winds up um, dying and the young girl sort of steps into her shoes. So we're learning about that during slave time. But in freedom time, she's a grown adult and she also is taken on this role and has this sort of reputation in the community. And she has her own demons to be fighting against and also those things that are going around in the community. So that is Conjure Women by Afia Atakora. This is a debut novel, one that cover is freaking stupid. Dunning. Um, and there's a lot to unpack in this one. I think you guys will really like it if you like those historical um, sort of uh, fiction, but also with a lot of hefty themes. And yeah, the writing is absolutely beautiful. I've read about one quarter of it and I'm absolutely loving it. A book that I have finished and is coming out, is already out, is The Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card. She's a librarian, so I'm absolutely in love with her so much. And this is out now. This is also, this is Simon and Schuster. Um, how to explain the, yeah, how to explain this book. Um, so this is how the book starts. We have an old man in a wheelchair who brings together a group of women. They turn out to be two of his daughters and one of his granddaughters. And what we find out is that many, many years ago, he faked his death. And one of his daughters has thought he has been dead for the last 30 years. Um, and his other daughter is a drug addict and his young granddaughter is trying to not fall into the same traps that his mom, his grandma, her mother did. That is sort of the impetus. That is what brings all of these women together. But then this book is really about all of their family. You jump around all different time periods. It's almost like a bunch of collected short stories that tell one single narrative. You are in um, Jamaica for certain periods of time. You are in um, London for certain periods of time. You are in the United States for certain periods of time. Um, and we learn about the whole family. We learn about the sons and the daughters and the grandchildren of this man. And it goes through time. So he is old at the beginning of the novel. He winds up passing. What does that mean for those of them um, that are still around? What does his legacy leave behind? Um, and how does it affect who they are as people? Um, I loved this book. I will say the last chapter left me a little flummoxed. I'm not sure I understood the last chapter. Still thinking about it a lot. So I want a lot of people to read it and talk to me about it. But I really do believe that this is a stellar 
stellar debut. And that's These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card out from Shyman and Schuster. And you can get your hands on this now. That cover is gorgeous. So I'm not going to try to hold up with all these books. This video has been long enough, but I hope every single one of these books winds up on your TBR. I hope you guys love them as much as I love the ones I've read and are as excited about the rest of them as I am. As always, I always say I could not do this without you guys. So thank you for watching. Please leave comments below. Comments, you know, entertain. Also, we can talk about the books. It lets people know you're watching my videos. I will definitely get back to you and we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, if you are a new subscriber, please subscribe and stick around. I do like to talk about books if you haven't noticed. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye!